All right, well, welcome everyone to Vapor Open Airtight Insulation Using Stonewall. Uh, this course is approved for GBCI, Nary Green, Certified Green Professional, BPI, Non-Hole House, as well as AIVD, to name a few. Uh, also, under AIA, Health, Welfare, and Safety, HSW, which may make it applicable to your state-based design or contractor license. Um, today, I'll be your moderator. My name is Brett Little, and I am the executive director here at the nonprofit, The Green Home Institute. And, you know, we're going to be talking about learning how to design and build a home that's paper open and airtight um, using stone wall and, you know, having alternatives to our standard um, uh, uh, foam, rigid foam insulation. Really, uh, that's the other aspect of it is that there are other alternatives. So join us for that. And real quick before we get started, a huge thanks to one of our top tier sponsors, uh, introducing the all new Rheem Prestige, an energy efficient, quiet, and all electric hybrid heat pump water heater. Uh, the future of water heating is finally here. Uh, 50, 65, or 80 gallons, the Rheem Prestige can serve many of your different clients' different needs, uh, all the way up to 3.75 uniform energy factor. In other words, over 300% more energy efficient, the larger you get with the size. Ream stands behind their product with a 10-year warranty, quieter than the typical loud heat pumps, uh, available for tax incentives. One thing that's really interesting is that there's two different ways to install this system. Uh, uh, you can do it uh, for dehumidification purposes uh, by not ducting the system, which will also help um, dehumidify the air uh, and going unvented. And you can also do it um, in areas where you're concerned about humidity issues uh, or, or pulling too much humidity, especially in cold winters, and pulling energy from the inside, and ducting the system to the exterior. We've also seen folks duct it to the inside as well through a small closet and use a filter to help uh, keep the system going. Check with your local HVAC or energy uh, assessor to determine what makes the most sense. Rheem Prestige also helps your clients stay smart with service notification and potential leak detection but still make sure to use the drip pan if installing it. Another neat thing about these types of systems is utilities are getting smart and basically using them through incentive programs um, as battery sources. And you'll see more of that around the country uh, using your heat pump water heater as a, as a hybrid battery approach. Learn more to ream.com hybrid savings. Also wanna thank our new sponsor, Ava Window. Um, they have a uh, high R value UPC windows up R7, and then their aluminum uh, windows have recycled content in it, which we find to be pretty neat. So you can go to their website and check out all the different uh, window solutions they have there at avawindow.com. All right, well, um, I'm very excited to uh, announce our speaker today. Um, Dan uh, Edelman, a high performance building material professional with more than two decades of experience uh, in the business of development manager for Rockwell Insulation North America. Uh, with a project management background and working on job sites since day one, Dan enjoys explaining both the building science behind the design along with the application process. Dan has currently been with Rockwell for over nine years and we're excited to hand it over to him. Dan, please take it away. Thank you, Brett. And let me just switch this over. So just to confirm, can you see my presentation screen? Yes. Okay. Not anymore. Okay. Now I can. Okay. So yeah, so welcome everybody you know thank you for joining this is going to be going over uh, stone wool insulation and vapor open and airtight wall assemblies so a lot of the applications that i will really be discussing today are really geared more for the new construction market however myself i have a passion for old homes my current home is actually 150 years old uh, and I did a similar concept with it. Now I couldn't get it super airtight as you could with a new construction home, but a lot of the same techniques can be utilized in, uh, in retrofit. So let's get started. So Rockwell sponsors this learning unit provided by Hanley Wood, their registered provider with the AIA uh, Continuing Education Services. 
this program is registered with AIA as such. It is not an approval or endorsement by AIA of any material product or manner of construction. Questions related to specific materials services should be directed to Rockwell or myself after you complete this learning unit. So these are just copyright materials. If you need any to use any of these uh, images or anything, just feel free to reach out to myself. So the learning objectives from this course, really it's gonna be discussing the thermal properties and energy efficiency benefits of stone wool versus foam plastic insulations in rain screen and cavity wall systems. The second is examining how Stonewall manages moisture as it relates to rain screen and cavity wall systems, which this is, I think, more of an important part of the you know, total wall design is really how these designs are able to handle moisture. The third is describing features and benefits of Stonewall in the context of building science and fire safety. And then also designing for durability and really why this vapor open and airtight assembly is gonna work for the longevity of your home. So the big picture, you know, buildings consume a large amount of energy, roughly 40% of energy and CO2 emissions are actually used or being pushed out just from the buildings and the lack thereof of insulation and proper air sealing techniques. So, Code as well as organizations like the AIA 2030 Challenge realize that if we could build more energy efficient buildings, it'll considerably reduce emissions. The most effective way to make our buildings more energy efficient is increased insulation and better air sealing rather than trying to add renewable energy resources such as solar or wind. So one of the easiest ways to reduce energy usage of a new or even a, a remodel or a refurbished building is to add additional insulation. In order to increase the efficiency of the building enclosure, the effect will be that the building will require less energy in order to maintain the same interior conditions. The majority types of insulation in the marketplace can be split into two categories. You have fibrous insulations, which really consists of your fiberglass, your stone wool, your slag wool, and your cellulose. Then you also have your foams and your plastics, which is really your XPS, and that's your blue boards or your pink board, your EPS, which is basically your styrofoam, like a coffee cup. And then you also have uh, polyiso and uh, closed cell spray foam or open cell spray foam. So what is stone wool? Let's take a look at its properties and applications. So there's really two main parts of stonewall insulation. The, the, the biggest portion of it is gonna be uh, basalt lava rock. It's the most abundant resource in the world and also recycled steel slag. And this is simply just the byproduct from the smelting of iron ore. So what we really do, and I have a video that we are on uh, next that will uh, play, but we basically take the rocks, we melt it down and whip it into uh, fibers, which are similar to, the production is very similar to cotton candy production. And then we also add binders just to kind of hold everything together and add water repellency. led to the invention of stone wool insulation a century and a half ago. It was observed that volcanic lava could be whipped into woolly tufts by prevailing winds. Soon, this was being replicated in factories to produce stone wool for insulation. Shaped into bats, stone wool insulation can be tucked snugly between the studs of a framed wall. It acts as both a thermal and acoustic insulator. Here's the soundproofing proof. In this demonstration, an activated alarm goes into a box lined with stone wool. When the lid is closed, the sound is contained. When it's lifted again, the annoying sound is back. They make stone wool from basalt rock and slag recycled from the steel industry. The process is fueled by coke, which is a form of coal. 
Basalt rock is solidified lava formed when rock melts underground and then quickly cools. After the rock has been partially crushed at the quarry, a loader scoops it onto a screen to separate the bigger pieces from the fine particles. The particles will be processed into briquettes, which can be used in the production of stone wool, along with the bigger pieces of rock. The rock and briquettes, along with the steel slag, melt into lava in a furnace. Temperatures reach 1500 degrees Celsius, as hot as a volcano. A spinning machine whips the lava into thin strands of stone wool in a process that's like making cotton candy. The strands form tufts and a little binding solution holds them together. A spray of oil adds water repellents. Now a fleecy web, the stone wool rides a conveyor to the factory's upper level, where it spills into a huge pendulum device. The pendulum swings to and fro to layer the stone wool in a zigzag pattern. The number of layers varies, depending on the kind of insulation being made. The now layered stone wool travels between rollers, which compress it substantially, adding density to the wool. Automated pushers tuck in the pack on each side as the wool enters a long oven. The heat cures the binder applied earlier allowing the compressed fibers to hold their shape. The now tighter pack exits through a cooling zone and travels under a roller which squeezes it to make the fibers more flexible. Circular blades then slice the moving mass of stone wool lengthwise. A branding tool burns the R value and company name onto the surface of the insulation as it moves forward. Robotic arms swing back and forth to slice the insulation to its final dimensions. Instead of sharp steel blades, these robots use high-pressure water jets to make their cuts. The jets do a precise job without generating dust or waste and the stone wool doesn't absorb the water from the jets. The sheer density of the wool makes it moisture resistant, along with the oil added to the fibers during spinning. To demonstrate stone wool's water repellent qualities, they pour water directly onto the surface. There's no absorption. The water just runs off. In this routine test, a worker torches the wool and it doesn't catch fire. Stone wool can withstand temperatures of almost 1200 degrees Celsius due to its natural properties. It's even cool to the touch on the other side. Once it's passed several quality control tests, the insulation heads for the packaging line. Grippers pull on a roll of plastic tube packaging and hot jaws cut and seal one end to form an open bag. Mechanical fingers hold the other end open as machinery slides it over a metal spout. A compressed stack of insulation is pushed into the spout. The spout expands and the insulation is released into the bag. The spout then retracts and the process is repeated. Machinery heat seals the open end. From a pile of basalt rock and recycled steel slag, to a bag full of insulation, it's been a wild and woolly ride. An erupting volcano led to the invention of... Thank you, and sorry if that was, that sometimes I've been noticing on virtual uh, webinars gets a little choppy, but hopefully you guys were all able to see the kind of production, and that was actually in our uh, Toronto plant up in Canada. Thanks for watching. Please continue to watch the next part of the session to complete the course and get your continuing education credits. Be sure to check out all of our courses available online that you can watch anytime and anywhere to pick up your CEUs. Before you go, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube to get weekly updates and stay up to date on green building science courses, webinars, and home tours. Thanks again.